Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease is the most common inherited neurological disorder. Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease is not to be confused with the Charcot disease. There is confusion in the community. What we see often in letter requests is confusion between Charcot and Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease. Unfortunately, they begin with the same word, but Charcot disease refers to amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which is a very serious disease that leads to death in two years. On the other hand, you can live with Charcot-Marie Tooth all your life. In Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease, a genetic malfunction corrupts the synthesis of a protein that is a constituent of the peripheral nerve, either of the myelin sheath or of the axon. There are many forms of Charcot-Marie Tooth disease, each classified according to the gene responsible for the condition. Patterns of genetic transmission depend on the form. Onset of symptoms is most often in adolescence or young adulthood, but can occur at any age. Charcot-Marie Tooth disease usually isn't life-threatening, but as of today, there is no cure. Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease is a peripheral motor and sensory neuropathy. Patients often present with symptoms during adolescence or at a young age with minor stumbling, mild walking difficulties, running difficulties, trouble jumping, and above all, is associated with dysmorphism. What does that mean? Pescavus. The first symptom started when I was very little. I started to walk on my toes and then would put my feet sideways. I was constantly tripping and falling. It is not only associated with gait disorders, someone who stumbles, falls, is less enduring when running, worse at physical education, but is also associated with dysmorphism and pescavus, claw toes, Achilles tendon retraction, a child who walks on their toes for a long time when they are five or six years old, and mild scoliosis. I always came in last at school when we had to run. I always finished last and walked poorly. It was clear that there was obviously something wrong. There can also be balance disorders, muscle cramp, or, as we said before, strange sensations in the hands and feet, tingling, a feeling of numbness, or not properly feeling objects when touching them. However, at the onset of this disease, the signs are unclear. You may see only one specific confirmation, for example, of the foot, such as pez cavus or hammer toes. What should be a red flag for doctors, apart from a child who falls and who can fall for X reasons, is deformed feet. Muscular atrophy, which is greater in the distal muscle, leads to a specific confirmation. We call it an inverted champagne bottle, and it is something an attentive eye can catch. They are sometimes referred to an orthopedist quite simply with the explanation that he was born like that, he has pescavus. Then there will be a whole orthopedic period before someone says, well, in the end, isn't that another disease under there? Some even undergo surgery before even receiving a diagnosis. So, beware of walking disorders. Also, beware of any hand disorders that the patient reports to the doctor. And also, take care if the patient reports sensory disorders or strange sensations, especially in their hands and feet. Then, if the doctor, general practitioner, or, above all, the general neurologist, makes use of a simple tool, the reflex hammer, they will find that there are no deep reflexes.